hello guys and welcome back to my youtube channel this is ben today we are going to start on a brand new series and this is on laravel m -Pesa integration it's really going to be very simple i want you to just focus on the patterns and the patterns is just be looking at uh, probably we'll just scan the m -Pesa website just once and then we'll just extract the patterns and then the rest will just flow without any issues uh, i've already done and this is probably the ui that i'm going to do i've already done so the front end is done on view and then the back end is uh, on laravel but when we'll be doing it we won't be using the view yes we'll just use normal blade templates and it's going to be very very simple and very very fast i hope you're excited so the first thing that i want to do is to go to my tutorials folder and basically install laravel because we're going to start on a fresh install and then we roll from there so this will be first video we just install and add the necessary configuration files and the second will proceed like that so let's go to i'll go to my tutorials folder here what i'll do is i'll just create my laravel application so i'll just do compose uh, create we can do create project or just create so I'll just do project and I'll do Laravel Laravel so we do that and we'll have everything working perfectly so we'll just chill until it's done then we'll proceed a few moments later yeah so this is done so the next step we just open our code VS code so Laravel let's open it on our code so this is just actually based on Laravel 8, so you can apply the same principles to work on other uh, previous versions of Laravel, that is from 5 point something going forward, as long as, you know, I'm, I'm not going to do anything stuff uh, that is complicated, I'm just going to make sure that we do something very easy for all of us. Okay, so I'll just open my terminal. So the first thing I want us to do is to go to our ENV. I want us to add the MPESA specific environment variables that we need. Then we'll add security on, on top of that. And then the next video will just proceed, right? So if you've not watched any of uh, the videos I've done on integration for MPESA, there actually there's the introduction and other series I did a long, long time ago. So I'll just leave the link in the description and also uh, on the card. So you can just check and go there and just refresh what is MPESA, uh, what is access token and why do we need it and stuff like that. That, right so first thing i'll just go to my env yeah and i think i'll just choose just just below this i'm going to just to add my stuff here and i want to add a few fire a few things and that is the mpesa related consumer key consumer secret the short code and stuff and because we are again on dev the one that we use for c2b is different from the one that we use in lip and mpesa online sdk right so we are going just to have something here and then we'll again secure that then the next video we'll just start our thing right so let's go ahead so the first thing i want to do is to have my mpesa Mpesa consumer key, which is just going to be nothing for now. Then we have the Mpesa consumer secret. Once we have that, we need to have the, sh the two shortcuts. We have, I'll just call them Mpesa shortcode. That will have the shortcode for both B2C and C2B, but not SDK. So I'll again have the Mpesa SDK shortcode. I'll just call it like that. Once we have this SDK, uh, we'll also need to define our environment. And because I just want this thing to be like, we can use it to go live. So let me just do Mpesa ENV, and that is the environment that we're going to do or work on. Then we also have what we call the tests, the Mpesa test MSSD, right? The Mpesa test phone number, right? Right. I think uh, that's all we need for now. I will also need to define something, but I think I'll put, yeah, let me just have it here. So I'll just have the Mpesa test URL. Since I'm doing on my local host, it, it is not possible for me to access my router so I can do IP forwarding because I'm not like I'm, I'm getting internet from some someone else, right? So I can't access the router. We don't have even a public IP address, so it will be difficult for me. So to navig help navigate that, I'll be using Grok. And I've also done a tutorial on Grok, so make sure before you proceed, you go to, I think the video will also leave it in the description. Go, open it, uh, study it, install Grok, know how to work with it because you're going to use the URL that will generate here and it's what is going to guide us in what we'll be doing going forward okay now for SDK to work we'll also need the pass key so mpesa pass key and because we'll also be doing b2c so i'll just also have mpesa b2c password or what you call the security credential we'll just know them as we go okay so basically this is all we need to first of all before we jump into it the next thing i want to do is that uh, because we're still on development uh, here if we forget to change these details and someone just accesses our app, there'll be a really big problem. So we need to secure these details that we have provided here. And I'll just go to my config app.php. And after everything here, I'll have a debug, sorry, have a debug blacklist. And this, I don't want to see these things 
when I'm doing debug or when there's a debug error being shown, okay? And the first, I want just to focus on the ENV like that. And uh, what we need here is just is everything that we had here. And just bring them here and then should be like that. Perfect. So let me just format this. And you can also choose, uh, so in case we run into an error when we're running this application, what will happen is we won't see these values. We'll just see them. It will just obscure everything. Um, I think that's all we need for now. The next thing I'll do is, again, we just want to get ready with everything. So I'll just do npm install for the things that I want here. And I just want to make sure I have Bootstrap ready because I'm going to just use Bootstrap just for UI purposes. Perfect. So that's done. So we've in done npm install. So the next thing, the next thing we need to do is to install Bootstrap. So I'll just do composer require Laravel UI. So Laravel UI is like a selection contains a selection of libraries that you can use. You can use Vue. You can use uh, React. Anything, right? So once that is done, I just need to run PHP artisan. I need to do UI bootstrap because you don't want out and stuff like that. Let's just run that. Perfect. So it has installed. So the next thing they are saying is we should run npm install and npm run dev. So just highlight these, copy and paste them here. Run it. It will again take some time. So let's meet after it's done. One eternity later. So once it runs, you might run into a funny error just need again to run npm run dev and now we have boots no no we don't have bootstrap we need to go now to uh, and install our bootstrap so what i'll do i'll go to my resources go to views and we'll just use the welcome page that's there so we'll just delete everything here and we'll just create my own so just say laravel daraja and we'll need to bring our bootstrap css I'll just do link css and you will have a blade directive and we just want to use the asset and access css slash app dot css delete this i need to check whether that is working by going to just do h3 and hello world and just do php artisan serve so go to my local hosts and i'll go to port 8000 yeah, and we have Bootstrap already installed, so we can just confirm that by doing div dot container. We want everything to be inside there, so just remove this and put it inside here, and uh, run it, and we are good to go. So Bootstrap is already installed. So the next thing that we'll do probably is to install or to design this kind of form and uh, some links which I think they're not going to be very important in this tutorial but just the UI right so the UI will just be the only thing that will help us a lot and then from there we'll need to create our controllers and the controller I think we'll just use one controller for requesting and one controller for processing the responses that we get from Daraja then we'll use the API endpoint to but uh, communicate with the pixel, right? So I will end this on here. Uh, please note that we've just added uh, our consumer key and consumer secret. We've also come here and uh, like secured them by adding them in our config and it's debug blacklist. And that's very important. We can also do the same for servers and stuff like that here, uh, password and things. And then here, this is just the basic UI where we'll just be requesting everything. Again, we'll be using Axios. Axios, when we'll be doing um, Ajax request, instead of using Ajax, we'll just use Axios here. So, how we use Fetch? I think Fetch is much better because most people know it. So this being our first video, I hope you've, you are ready now. This is the long awaited day, it has finally arrived. So in the next video, we'll just jump right in, do the UI, then we'll start doing the controllers and boom will be done, right? So this will just be a different from other tutorials that will have a UI for the whole project. And again, this the source code for this will be on my GitHub. Just clone the project and let's flow together. So when you have a update, I'll also be pushing some update on Git. You can also end pull, and if you'll have an issue, just issue a PR and we'll fix together, right? So yeah, so thank you for watching and let's meet in our next video.